I'm Brian from RC Workboat Haven. Welcome to part two of the gaff cutter build. We're going to start off the video with a little water test to find out where the water line is on this model. The keel we fabricated in part one came to 17 pounds. The original hull was four pounds. So the boat came in at 21 pounds. In the water test, I added four pounds. So we're at 25 pounds. Our overall projected weight is 30 pounds. So let's take a look at that water test first and then proceed with the build. Thanks for watching. The dock was left in all winter and this one's kind of sagged down at the end so I can uh, reach down about eight inches to the water here. So I'm gonna set the hull in and we'll see where the water line lies. I've got four pounds interior ballast. So it's fairly close to what I had imagined. I have to be careful it doesn't get away from me. There's a lot of stability with that keel. Well, I think she'll be all right to proceed on the model. So that water immersion test showed me that the water comes to about five eighths of an inch below the bottom of the gunnel. And that is just about the same place that I painted the green water line on the schooner over here. To make the model easy to work on, I've made a skid and the skid has pads on the bottom. So the whole, uh, the whole boat is easy to uh, turn around. My plan is to make a wooden gunnel strip, which I'll glue onto the hull. It's going to be easy at this point without a deck to get clamps along here to do work on the lower gunnel and the railing area. I plan to make this wooden gunnel strip 3 eighths of an inch wide. So now I'm going to prep up the wood so that I can glue that onto the hull. I need some 1 16th by 1 8th basswood strips. So I'm using a 1 16th inch basswood board that's 4 inches wide and 24 inches long. I have a straight edge placed on it with weights at both ends. I've made marks at both ends of the uh, board 1 8th of an inch apart. So I'm just moving this ruler along and lining it up at the ends with the mark and making a cut with uh, a sharp knife. So now I have seven pieces all marked with two light cuts across the top. And now the third pass will completely sever the piece from the board. Now I have plenty of basswood strips to get working on the gunnel. So I have the 1 16th by 1 8th strip temporarily clamped in place just above the uh, gunnel. I've got it uh, projecting out up forward about uh, half an inch. I'll cut that off later. And uh, in this section here, I've stopped the piece just before the radius on the stern. I'll deal with that in a different way. So now I'll take out the first strip and glue it in place. The hull is being given one coat of latex primer and that is hardened up. I've also primed inside the bulwark. I'm running a bead of Gorilla Glue just along the top of the gunnel. So that looks pretty good. I'll wait a few minutes until it till the tack sets in and then I'll just slide the clamps a little bit and clean up behind the behind them so that there's no lumps for the next step. And now I'll do the after section in here and then I'll do the other side of the boat. So there's a fairly tight radius here on the transom. 
Uh, if I get uh, just a flat strip and try to bend it, it's likely going to break and then cause me more work. Got some uh, 1 16th basswood and I'm going to cut it across the grain, five or six pieces, and then see if I can bend them around here and glue them. So that bent around there fairly easily. And I could probably just get a straight piece in here. Now I want to make this uh, gunnel strip about 3 eighths of an inch wide. But I don't want to cut it straight because it, it may, may or may not bend properly. So I'm laying a flat piece of bass, basswood up here like that. And I'm just making a line across the shear. And now I'll cut along that line. I show this in some detail in the Bad Weather Ship Build series. Slide it along and make a mark. Now I'll cut down that line. So that looks pretty good. So now I'll use the same curve that I cut and I'll make one for the port side. And then I'll work my way down the boat, port and starboard, and go around the transom. And then I'll glue this 3 8 gunnel up and we'll have that part of the build done. So the enlarged gunnel has set up nicely. It measures a shade over 3 8 of an inch wide and it's 1 8 of an inch thick. I want to add a piece up here where the shear line runs that is 1 8 of an inch thick by about 5 16 of an inch wide. The bass, basswood board is too stiff to properly lay against the inside. So I got the line marked on a piece of heavy paper here and I'll use that as a pattern. So I've cut that shape out with a pair of scissors. Here's a basswood board, 1 8 of an inch thick. I've got two weights here holding down the paper and I'm just going to make a line and I'll cut this out with a knife. I measured in 5 16 of an inch from that uh, curve and I placed the pattern back on the uh, board and I've marked it. So now I'll cut my first strip off of this board. So here's the first strip which is a good fit. Now I'm going to use the same size strips as a deck shelf on the inside and I think that I will cut two extra ones for the interior to be glued on in here. So now I'm going to continue all the way around the boat in the same method that I've used in the other builds and I'll go all the way around the outside and I'll go all the way around the inside and glue everything to, into place. Right in here I'm going to use two layers of 1 16th basswood cross grained. and make a mark. So now I'm on the last stages of the top railing. I have a strip of wood inside the bulwark and my deck will go right on top and extend right out to the edge. So I've got a, about a half an inch deck shelf here for when I finally glue the deck in. So while this glue is setting up I'm going to start looking at items that I can do inside the boat before I put the deck on. So let's start down here with the propeller shaft tube hole. You can refer to uh, bad weather ship build, but I'm using the same pattern here and I'm making a mark for the shaft. So now I'm going to start with a two millimeter pilot bit. Three sixteenths bit, a 
and a 5 16 bit. And we got a pretty good fit here. Now I'll send all the paint off just in this area around the hole because there'll be uh, epoxy going on there later. I'm also going to clean up this surface on the uh, rudder shoe because I'm going to work on that next. Now I already know that the location of the rudder shaft is right here. I've cut another piece of this um, chain link reinforcing uh, fiberglass. I want to modify this uh, projection so that I can undo two bolts and then swivel the rudder shoe and let it drop down and then I can repair or remove the rudder if I have to. So I've put an angle on the end that's the same slope as the keel here and I'm going to reach in and I've located the exact spot where a three millimeter hole has to be drilled. So I'll be able to swivel this top piece and it will drop straight down. So I'm going to make a mark here and that will be where I cut off the original shoe. Now before I make this cut, I want to pre-drill my mounting holes. We'll do one here and one here. Now I'll drill two three millimeter holes in those two spots for the two bolts. So here's the shaft in the original position and I'm using that as a pivot. I've got the uh, top piece of the shoe through the shaft hole and now it's clamped on but I'm on the underside but I've already pre-drilled these two three millimeter holes for the bolts so now I can get my drill and line it up with the keel and hopefully get two fairly straight holes drilled through there. So I'll do this one first. Keep it lined up as well as I can here. Now I've got it up on the in its position up top and I was able to uh, smooth up the hole and we got a good alignment. Three millimeter uh, nuts and bolts. So I'm going to counter sink the, sink the bottom so that the uh, head fits in there flush. And the reason I put the head facing down is because I don't want any corrosion or sand inside there. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lot easier to take out in the future. So that's a fairly accurate fit. I've got nuts on the top. Next step, let's cut off the original piece so that the shoe will swivel. I cut the end off very straight here with a very with a with a thin uh, thin bladed hacksaw and uh, it did cause the hole to be slightly off so I enlarged the hole here in the bottom section just slightly so that this section would move right up against the cut surface here everything's bolted into place I put a piece of scotch tape just on this piece here on this surface and then I put the shaft through I super glued it and clamped it and then quickly took the shaft out so now this is setting up I may cut a piece off of this uh, after part here later on when I've designed the rudder because I don't want to have leverage here if the boat is dropped or something so now I can undo these two bolts and I can swivel the rudder shoe off and then take, take the uh, rudder off.
Now I will be constructing a deck of 1 8 inch basswood. I'll have to reinforce it as required in different spots. The, the deck will have a hatch on it, fairly large one, to give me plenty of access. But before I uh, design the outline of that hatch, I want to plan out where the uh, components go inside the hull. So I'm going to start with the boxes that hold the batteries and the box that uh, holds the electronics pod. Then we can get the items in position here and just get a feel for how much space there is and so on. So I'll start on that now. Now to build these boxes, I'm going to cut out the base first out of 332nd basswood and then glue the sides onto them, but at least I have a little border as a guide. The batteries I use are mainly 7.2 volt NIMH batteries, and they are a bit shorter. An 8.4 volt battery has an extra battery on the end, which makes them a bit longer. So I want to make sure that I make my battery boxes long enough to cover the extra length on, on this one. I'm going to make a mark on the board right about here. And at the other end of the board, I'm going to make the base for the electronics pod. And now I'll cut these bases out with a knife. I'll be using cedar for the sides of these boxes. This cedar measures 11 sixteenths by 3 sixteenths, and it's amazingly strong and light. I've used this cedar to make the floating docks. I've used it to make all of my skids and cradles, often out of spare uh, pieces that would have ended up in the garbage. It's a once glued together, it is extremely strong and rigid. I also use the cedar for reinforcing the undersides of decks and around hatch openings. It's great if you have to put a backup piece on a deck. Here in Canada, you can get this at the dollar store and it comes in the form of a folding lattice work. It works out to 30 feet of material for four dollars. So that's not too bad for hobbyists. So using weights to hold the sides in place, I've glued everything up. I show this in detail in Bad Weather Ship Build. So while I'm waiting for that, let's do some work on the vise. So this is the shaft we're going to use. I threaded the end with a uh, three millimeter thread and it's a right hand nut. I made a shaft dog here out of a coupling and I show that in detail in Bad Weather Ship Build. So I'll be using this nylon prop. It's 42 millimeters in diameter. I've drilled it out to three millimeters. And it is a left hand prop. I'm going to cut a groove into this propeller so that I can fit the dog into this groove. Now I'm setting the prop up here and just holding it with my hands and I've got one blade kind of backstopped. I'm going to pick a spot where I can get a clean cut. The, uh, the width is three millimeters so we can use the uh, shaft hole as a guide. Now I'll do the other side. Now I'll run a file through here and try to clean things up. And there's the groove. The shaft dog has two set screws in it and I was able to locate 
the two points where the set screws hit the shaft and I've marked it with black marker. So now I'm going to get a file and put a slight flat on those two areas. I show this in detail in the Bad Weather Ship series. Now the dog won't move. Tightening up shaft nut really, really tight. So now this whole assembly here is locked in place and it won't matter if I'm going forwards or backwards. This isn't going to move. There she is. So here's the cutter tipped on its side and I've taped in the basic components here for the project. The center of the mast is 12 inches in from the stem. So I've made a uh, cross here. So the mast will come up at this point. My hatch will start just aft of that mast step and it'll continue all the way along and go just behind the arm on the rudder shaft. So here's the rudder shaft. Here's the rudder servo. I'll be making a wooden bulkhead here to hold that servo. Just forward of that is the electronics pod box. I'll make that fairly level. The shaft comes out just under that box and I'll have to extend it a little bit to make sure that there's room for a loophole right in this area here. There's a single motor mount that'll be epoxied directly onto the uh, gel coat and then on either side will be two batteries. Just forward of the end of these boxes I'll build another bulkhead and that will hold the uh, servo for the sails and this servo arm will be raised up so that it'll be just under the hatch level and I can easily get in there and tie up little strings and so on as uh, in order to balance the sails out. And then of course in the future if I have to put a stronger servo on here I've got a nice straightforward bulkhead to attach it to. So I may have to play with that but I'm just going really really basic uh, and, until I find out how the boat balances in the water and so on. So there's the general layout. So that brings us to the end of part two of the gaff cutter build. We've made a lot of progress but we've got a lot of work ahead of us. So don't miss part three. You're always welcome to comment, like and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching.